Hey guys, this episode is sponsored by Idaho realtor Jennifer McCulloch with Century 21 High Desert. In this competitive market, having a representative that has knowledge and expertise makes all the difference. Whether you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in Southeast Idaho, you owe it to yourself to speak with Jennifer. She's available at 208-520-2012. This episode is also sponsored by Dynamic Towing. For all your roadside assistance and towing needs, call Dynamic Towing at 208-403-4164. They're a family-owned and operated business. They've been here in Southeast Idaho and surrounding areas for many years. They do really cool services, guys. These include fuel deliveries, jump starts, lockouts, tire changes, towing, and accident towing as well. So give them a call if you're in need of any of these services and you're on the side of the road. Better put this phone number into your phone right now, 208-403-4164 to make sure you're safe. Give Dynamic Towing a call. Guys, I'm just going to tell you right now, this next guest is phenomenal. Um, He's a dear friend of mine. His name is Trevor Summers. He is a certified personal trainer and just an absolute beast. You need to check him out on Instagram. Follow train underscore with underscore Trev. All right. So he runs and operates a business called Train, Train with Trev. Um, He is just an inspiration, man. Uh, He has a really cool backstory and he's he's made it to the top and he's just grinding and fighting and uh, he is just a success story that I really love and those are the type of people I want to have in my circle and on the podcast as guests. So here it is, guys. I really hope you enjoy it. Be safe out there. We'll talk to you again. Well, hey, man, let's get started. Hey, guys. uh, So I got uh, Mr. Trevor Summers. Uh, I call him Big Trev. Uh, Trev and I go way back. We went to high school together. We used to smash heads and football together a lot. And uh, he's just a freaking awesome human being. And I thought he would be great to have on the podcast today because he's got quite a backstory. Um, him and I both kind of come from similar backgrounds. I'd say his was a lot more challenging than mine, but uh, we both kind of came out alive and <laughs> been able to thrive in our passion space. And so, um, Trev, how's it going over there in Boise, man? Oh, it's bearable. You know, it's going, well. it's going well. I Boise is just a beautiful place altogether. You know, temperate climate. Obviously, coronavirus is hitting us, and so it's a bigger city. So we have to make those adjustments. But besides that, you know, we're holding it together. Good man. Well, I, last time I talked to you, I think you you caught the COVID, right? Yeah, oh, I've had it. Yeah, it wasn't too bad though. It was like five days, kind of feeling under the weather, and then I was better. My wife, she just lost her taste and smell, but she mm. actually like a 5k having it not with other people but just on her own and i followed behind her on the bike <laughs> I wasn't running. that was gonna happen <laughs> yeah dude how i've heard some different stories on this and maybe you could share your experience so like uh guys that are coming into a healthy you know they're they're taking care of their body maybe they're up on their vitamins and they've been working out they seem to get through it a lot better um, do you find that to be true Oh yeah, I mean, there's fluke times for anybody that gets sick and then they have problems with it. But for the most part, the healthier you are, the better you're going to do at anything when it comes to sickness or illness and recovery. So you're going to have your nutrition dialed in already. You're going to be eating healthy. You're going to be cutting out things like alcohol, um, kind of limiting sugars, just the things that you already know are going to cause problems. Mm-hmm. Your immune system is going to be a lot better. Um, you're going to be able to perform a lot better. So all in all, your body and your immune system is going to recover a lot easier. Is there, you're not, smoking, uh, you're not vaping, you know, your lungs are healthy, so you can recover a lot easier, I think. Yeah, that vaping thing, man, I'm, I never got with that. I'm not sure how that all goes down, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I think we lost boomers because we don't know about those things. I know. I'm sure if it was around back in high school when we were messing around, I'm sure we'd be packing a vape around. <laughs> Days or two. I, I can't say I didn't have a, a char or two in my career. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> so give us kind of, uh, on, I want to share with the audience, can you just kind of give us your backstory a little bit and how you kind of got to where you were? Because I don't know, were you expecting to be where you were 
Like if you look back on high school and kind of where you were, your compass was pointed, were you anticipating to be, I mean, right now you're owning your own training business and uh, I mean, super educated with everything in the medical field and training and personal training and health and stuff. So, I mean, give us some insight to that and what you anticipated early on. Um, I kind of grew up with a crazy family. Uh, my dad died from using drugs at a young age. And uh, I don't know, I always expected a lot out of myself, but my family wasn't healthy. They're all, you know, alcoholics. I've had five people in my immediate family die from drugs or alcohol. So I think the path wasn't necessarily going to be easy, but I was always the one that was like, let's play sports. Let's go outside. Let's do something. I mean, I was always wanting to be healthy. I always had, you know, my family kind of dragging along the side there. Kind of mm -hmm. make it harder. Um, but I feel like I've always had a passion for sports specifically. And that kind of led to, all right, you know, how do I help other people? And then it kind of led to training, obviously, and, and brought me back around. But um, throughout my life and all, all the trauma, I've had lots of different things. And we'll probably go over some of those things as we go on. But it's always led back to being healthy and exercising of some sort. And so... For me to be able to help other people through that is kind of what keeps me going, I think. Yeah, dude. I can see that because you were a beast in high school. And I I mean, I think you and I both contribute a lot of our success to actual physical fitness because that's one thing that made us different than other people. We were two of the bigger kids in our school, and uh, we just kind of had this, I guess, natural interest, I guess, to want to be strong and to push iron around and – that made us different than other people. And I think I've leaned on that a lot in my life. And it always, whenever something's bad in my life, I always find that if I, if I get working out and start throwing some weights around or just doing some cardio, pushing myself and challenging myself, for some reason, it just quiets all that noise. Do you feel like that's kind of the same for you too? Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, that's something you can control. You can control the weights. You can control that environment. You can control yourself. You might not be able to control everything around you. But, yeah, you get in the weight, weight room and start pushing some heavy weight around, get pumped up, let out all your aggression, and, yeah, everything kind of just goes away. I forget about everything else in the moment and just kind of have my freedom. No matter what was happening in my life, that was kind of my, my safe place. I yeah, kind of your church, so to speak, huh? Yeah, yeah. For sure. I mean, I felt, I always kind of felt like a fat kid too, which is weird because even though we were the bigger kids and definitely way more muscular than all the other guys, they'd tease you about being fat or whatever. And I think that kind of also drove me to be like, all right, well, I'm definitely not fat. I'm way stronger than you. So let me prove that as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I still carry some of that with me. I still carry my, um, my younger age fat kid syndrome. I carry that still with me. And I, I don't know, honestly, I'm sure a, a, a clinical psychologist could probably get to the root of that, but I feel like that has pushed me, but sometimes it has, it's kind of, it's kind of my Achilles heel, but it's also what kind of pushes me to get through some stuff, kind of that chip on your shoulder, you know? Yeah. I mean, you can use it for one or the other. A lot of the things that have happened to me in my life, I'm like, okay, can I use this to make myself better? Am I going to go up against the odds and get better? Or am I going to use it as an excuse? So I could say, oh, I'm just a fat kid, you know, for all my life, I'm just going to be fat and I'm going to give up and just let myself be fat. And I guess everyone else wins. But to me, no, it was like, all right, that's not going to happen. I'm going to show everybody wrong. Besides, obviously you're doing it for yourself and, you know, you want to be healthy and all that. But I think it kind of originated to where like, okay, I want to be the best athlete I can be. I want to look the best I can. And I, I'm not going to be the fat kid in class anymore. <laughs> that doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good. People treat you differently. Like I've even been fat in my late, like later in life, I got up to 300 pounds after I had some surgeries that went wrong. I was an iron worker and uh, I got left bleeding after a surgery and uh, had some traumatic experience from that where I ended up having to have three more surgeries to fix it over about two years. They told me I wouldn't be able to lift weights anymore that, you know, I wasn't going to be able to come back and do anything. So I got, real depressed, got a lot of anxiety, kind of didn't know what to do with my life. And I kind of circled back around to, all right, you, you know how to do one thing really well, and that's how to exercise. And so I went back to, back to college and decided I would start doing something with it. You know, so that, that's kind of 
the path it started leading me down. What was it like to get back in shape after the surgeries? Because I, if I remember correctly, didn't it have something to do with your back? Oh, that's later. <laughs> oh, that was, oh, that's on top of all that. Oh, I've, yeah, I've had some, that's kind of what led me towards physical therapy because I've had, so this was a hernia that went wrong. Um, it was strangulated hernia. I was working as an iron worker and one of the guys I was working with, he had a ton of steel and uh, he, they let go. He was doing it by himself, but he was supposed to be packing like 500 pounds of rebar with a couple other guys. But the pin that was locking the rebar together, like snapped and it let go and he was holding it and it like crushed the top on top of him and he fell down. It was like on top of his head and all kinds of stuff. So I ran over there as fast as I could, just picked it all up and you have to twist and push to get it off. So it just exploded. My hernia exploded out of me. So your intestines popped through your muscle wall and then it was like pinched off. So it was like emergency surgery had to happen right then. So they rushed me to the ER and uh, did the surgery, sent me home. Um, obviously they put you on a lot of pain medication and stuff. And I remember waking up and going into the bathroom and, and I was like, oh, something isn't right. And uh, needless to say, I was bleeding that entire time that I was asleep and at home. And it was just bleeding and just going down, down into my legs and everything else down there. I mean, my testicles were like this big by the time I woke up and realized it. So I carried them into the emergency room. <laughs> so yeah, I was, I was terrified and I went back the next day and, and carried them into the emergency room as soon as I knew and they did another surgery um, and that caused some strangulation. Anyways, so within like a year from then, I wasn't healing right because they had pinched off one of the tubes that go into there, your spermatic tube. Anytime I would twist, the left one would swell up like a baseball. And so it would just be swollen. I couldn't move, couldn't, obviously couldn't exercise at that point. So then they're like, all right, let's do another surgery. And so <laughs> it just, uh, it was a long time. And I obviously had a hard time not being able to do what I wanted in life. And I had to sit there and I had to think, all right, what's the next step? What do you really want to do? Because I didn't want to be an iron worker, but it paid $21 an hour. So yeah. I, I was like, all right, let's start using our mind instead of our body and just throwing weights around and throwing rebar around or whatever. And I decided to go to school and start fixing some things. Yeah. Nice, man. I had a, that's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty traumatic. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I was just visualizing that I had a hernia surgery and uh, it kind of went south as well. Not nearly as bad as yours, but I, I was just complaining. I, didn't, I wasn't really sure what the pain was. I just knew that my testicles were always achy, you know? And so I remember going in, having a couple different ultrasounds and they said, well, you got a hernia here on your lower left side. Um, I mean, you know, the process of what, well, you kind of went right to the OR. So you didn't really go through the ultrasound stuff. I, I, with it. Okay. So yeah, I, I, I was nervous, dude. Having a surgery was the most, is this, it was the scariest thing ever in my life. That was like my number one fear. I could talk in front of 10,000 people. Uh, I, I mean, I would do anything behind a, besides have a surgery. In fact, my wife, like when we were walking to the front doors, the hospital that morning to go get the surgery, I was contemplating about just taking off and force gumping it across the parking lot. Like, see ya, <laughs> you know? Anyways, I went through the surgery, but I woke up and, uh, my right side hurt and I'm like, Oh, why is my right side hurt? And the nurse came in and said, well, you know, the doctor couldn't find anything on the left side. So he found a little one on the right hand side and put some mesh in there. And I remember being just pissed instantly, man. And I'm like, that's the wrong side, you know, and you're all anesthesia up and you're all zombied and stuff. And I was just getting kind of angry and come to find out, he, I went to my post-op meetings and he confused the right and the left. So I still have the pain on the left-hand side. This is three, four years ago, but I remember that experience, man, going home, they send you home with a special type of underwear to hold your testicles all together. And yep. I mean, they're, it's just like a grapefruit down there, man. Can't walk. And then when you lay on the couch, you're all like pain pilled up. And I remember just trying to get up out of the couch, how your abdominal wall was just, dude, it hurts so bad. Yeah, you can't and, oh, and I'm, I still get pissed off about it, just talking about it, because I still have the pain on my left-hand side. So it took me a while to get, I thought I could just start doing sit-ups and do core workouts and get my core strengthened back. No. Dude, it, it's taken me, I still don't have it back. 
yeah. because every time I work out, I, I, I try not to overdo it, but if I do a regular core workout, core exercise, the next two or three days, I'll feel that pain down there and I'll get a little achy in my left testicle. And so it's something I need to get fixed, but yeah. man, it just scares the hell out of me to go under the knife. Made you do all that and never fix the actual problem then. Yeah, and it sucked, dude, because there was like no repercussions. Like I didn't know, should I lawyer up? Should I say, hey, this is a malpracticing? But you mm -hmm. signed all that paperwork in the beginning saying, hey, dude, if we mess up, it's not on us, you know? That's what happened to me, and I probably should have had a lawyer, but I sucked it up and just moved on. <laughs> yeah, so I'm very, um, I'm very aware when I'm doing certain exercises. Like I don't lift heavy anymore. In high school, I used to lift heavy as hell. I remember – holding the record uh, in high school. Remember those records we'd have up on the wall for bench press and squat? Dude, I, I think I squatted and it probably wasn't, I don't know if I went all the way down, but I had it at 515, I think my junior year. Getting up there. Yeah. People believe me when I fell in those things. We were like, we were in the 500 pounds and we were benching 360 pounds, 340 or whatever. Yeah, I think I benched 335 my, I think my junior year. And I was weighing a buck 75. Yeah, you weren't that heavy. A buck 80. Well, my senior year, dude, I got lazy because I took, I didn't wrestle my senior year and I gained some weight and just got sloppy. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, that's unfortunate, but I'm trying to get back into shape now. I mean, what I'm caring about, I told you actually through the email that uh, a buddy of mine and I are going to go do a Spartan race. Oh. And so I'm trying to get more oh. endurance you know, and just take it, just being healthy. Like that's my main thing is just being healthy and not throwing around a bunch of heavy weight, just trying to be safe. And I think just because that, that hernia is always in the back of my mind. For sure. Yeah. But it makes it hard. There's always something kind of lurking in the back. Now, definitely with something that you need surgery on, there's not necessarily anything you can do about that. But if there's a ruptured disc that you can kind of absorb in your back or certain injuries, there's a lot of injuries you can just rehab on your own which is pretty badass. But when there's something like that, you know, you're putting that force in there, you're going to probably end up rupturing it or cause the hernia to be worse. And so that's, that's a little bit tougher, but there's nothing wrong with, you know, endurance and light strength training and allowing yourself to have a new goal, especially as, you know, we're getting our thirties and your body's going to start taking a beating from going heavier and heavier. So I have much respect for all sports. Is that your bulldog in the background? Yeah, let me go put her away because you're going to hear it. Let me just hear it. <laughs> oh, if you guys know Trevor at all, man, he, he loves bulldogs. In fact, when we, uh, in our high school, that was our mascot, it was a bulldog. So he's always been about the, the bulldogs, which is pretty cool. Yeah, if... Uh, Anybody else out there has had a hernia surgery, shoot me a comment, shoot me an email. Let me know what your right. process has been with it. No, I was just telling the audience uh, that you've always been into Bulldogs and our high school mascot was a Bulldog, so. That's right. <laughs> I had to carry on the tradition. That's awesome, man. Well, tell me, I see a Bulldog on your logo, actually, the train, train with Trev. Talk to us a little bit about your training business and how did that, ooh, dude, you need to send me one of those, bro. I will for sure, yeah. So the training business, yeah. So basically, um, during college, I had decided, all right, let's go physical therapy, exercise science route, because I was so interested in fixing my body and all the injuries I had. Um, during this time, I actually blew out my back um, before I knew how to properly exercise and get core strength and... So anyways, um, I wasn't able to barely walk. Doctor said I couldn't lift again, nothing more than 30 pounds. And I was like, no, nah, let's figure out a better way. So I went to college and kind of did all this training with physical therapists and shadowing. I think I had 500 hours shadowing in an internship and decided, all right, we better learn as much as we can because I'm not going to be a basic personal trainer because there's a lot of personal trainers out there that just have a certification now that certification you can get with just studying in a book for like a month. I'm like, all right, I'm going to go to college. Originally I wanted to train athletes for like Boise state or something. That's every trainer's dream is to be the strength and conditioning coach for some big team out Football there. Football program. Yeah. 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 So I decided I better, you know, be very, very knowledgeable and fix myself as well as that. So I did the exercise science route and uh, pre PT 
because just in case I wanted to go to physical therapy school, I'd have that option. So I kind of got through school and started training and shadowing physical therapists and learning as much as I could, but I was not digging it. It was uh, good information to have, but to me it was like, okay, this is the first step. Like you're going to heal somebody from an injury or they're, they're just weak and you can get them stronger. But what about, you know, benching 360 pounds? Mm Because physical therapy never takes you there, you know? Yeah. I wanted to be competitive. I wanted to be better than any other personal trainer. If I could, obviously, I'm, you know, you do whatever you can to the most, but having a well-rounded background is going to help you as a personal trainer because you're going to have injured athletes. You're going to need to know manual therapy if you can, um, all the different modalities of helping someone heal their body because they're going to be beating it up through training. So I started working through that and fixing myself and testing things on myself. Um, went through college and uh, decided physical therapy wasn't for me. They were making a lot less money. So there was no reason to go for three more years and make less money, in my opinion, Uh, besides being able to get your your work published and you could go to master's and exercise science if you wanted to anyway. So so I decided to start training. Um, During college, I started working with kids from juvenile corrections and uh, underprivileged kids, basically, because that's kind of what I was. I mean, I grew up, uh, my dad was gone they'd leave us for like a week at a time on drug binges and stuff. And it would just be me or, you know, they were just doing lots of terrible stuff. I didn't really have anyone there to support me or to help me reach my goals. Basically the school, if I showed up to school and hung out with my friends. That was the reason I went to school was to hang out with everybody. No one forced me to go to school. You know, I was living with my grandma in high school in a tiny little one bedroom. <laughs> I think it was like 600 square foot house. <laughs> You know, seeing seeing other people around me, you know, with big houses or whatever, I decided that I was going to make something big of myself. It might take some time, but no one's going to hand it to me. So anyways, going back to college, I decided I'm going to open my own training facility. I kind of thought maybe we'll make it to where we have a physical therapist on board or a chiropractor as well. And that's kind of what we're working towards now is opening a bigger facility. But at the moment, I have my own little training facility in Boise. And that's really nice during COVID because it's not like open to the public to where anyone can just walk in. Yeah. Just one-on-one personal training. And it's been really nice. You know, you can really focus on your people. You don't have anyone from the outside taking spots or taking the squat rack when you need it. Or, you know, the, the random perv guy staring at the girls while we're doing different bent over exercises or whatever. It's nice to be able to just put your focus on what's happening at that point. And I've really seen people flourish in that situation. So that part's been nice, being my own boss and opening my own place. But anyways, going back to the working with the, the kids from Juvenile Corrections, I think it kind of taught me how to work with anybody. So I had worked with people doing physical therapy. I did all kinds of just basic training. And then I took this job as just a secondary job to help people out because I I had a tough growing up. So I decided I better be kind of a mentor and someone that can help these guys and that job consisted of helping them get jobs, teaching them how to do everything from laundry to cooking or whatever. It was everything. It was all inclusive. But during that, I was able to take them to the gym and train them. And so what I started noticing was all these kids that would actually pay attention, who would listen to what I told them to and, and kind of got on a plan. Those were the kids that were graduating. Those were the kids that were getting the good job and keeping them and staying off drugs. And so I really started pushing to where we put more focus on the training part Um, and that really, really helped those guys. And so I noticed, all right, this is my own little case study where I'm putting these guys through different kind of training protocols to see what works for different people. Cause you see all the different body types and you can kind of, in that setting, you can tell them specifically what to eat and you can also tell them obviously what not to eat, but you're there with them. When you're training somebody outside of that, like one-on-one personal training, you see them for their session, but you're not in the house with them. You have no idea what they're eating. So I was able to control like, what are you eating? How often are you eating? And try different kind of little protocols with the guys and kind of found what's successful and what's not. And that actually helped me a lot when training individuals. Yeah, so it sounds like you hit the ground running when you actually kind of stepped into the professional side of it. Yeah, I think most people, when they start, they're like, oh, well, you know, trying to get their confidence up. They don't know how to work with someone who's a tough client maybe. 
they don't know all the different body types and just different situations that come up and they might be scared off if someone starts talking about their husband cheating on them or random things that people talk about while you're training them. But I mean, I had worked with 16 to 19 year old boys who are the crudest, craziest kids you'd ever meet with terrible crime. So I was already, all right, you know, I knew how to deal with anybody in any situation. So that gave me the confidence there. I had the PT background. So if there was an injury or anything, I already knew what to do for the most part. And I would refer, refer them to actual PTs if needed, but for the basics of it, I could definitely take care of that. And then just opening my screen a little wider here. Um, yeah, then I just started marketing a little bit and things took off. I think people know, you know, if you know your stuff, they can tell. Like if you just had a basic certification, you start training people, they ask you questions, you don't know how to answer it, right? But if yeah. someone throws random questions at you and you know how to, how to answer anything they got, then they have trust in you. So that kind of helped me take off pretty quick. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I, I remember when I did, uh, I was trying to chase my personal training thing because I wanted to follow the similar path that you went. And so I bought, uh, it was through ACE. Yeah. I don't even remember what ACE stands for anymore, but I remember I got books and flashcards and DVDs and went through all that stuff to get certified. But yeah, I mean, it, it's, you know, they kind of put a ceiling on it as far as your education until you actually go to a four-year college to get the rest of the material you need. But I remember I was just like, I wanted to do it so bad. And I, I used it as a side hustle. I remember I started training. Um, I, I don't know. I trained like three or four clients, but I started training them out of the world's gym here in Outer Falls. <laughs> and so I just say, Hey, meet me at five 30, you know, but I would, I, would get my fat calipers and give them their, all their measurements to get their goals down, what the objectives were, um, set up the price plan. And yeah, man, I had a, uh, what's those cameras. Remember those cameras where it would like spit out the film, Oh yeah, like a Polaroid camera, you know, sit there and shake that. I had one of those and, uh, yeah, man. So I trained people out of there and I remember the world gym people, they kind of caught on after about three or four weeks. They're kind of looking at me side. eyed like, oh, what you doing, man? <laughs> and uh, anyways, yeah, man, that was kind of like my first little side hustle. I called it body image. Okay. And uh, I got some results from people. And actually, one of the uh, first clients that I took on, she then became, it just, she was like, she just came out of a divorce. She was 30, 40 pounds overweight, super depressed. And she had a ton of fire though. You know, she was a, used to be a high school athlete. So I knew it was down deep inside. I just had to get it out of her. And anyways, man, that sparked her. And she ended up going to into fitness competitions and actually mm -hmm. out on stage, you know, two or three years later. And I, me I remember after I put that all behind me and I was moving on to a different career, I, I remember her reaching out to me on social media like, dude, Justin, thank you so much. You know, like you sparked this thing for me and my whole life has changed now. And now she's just a huge health and fitness advocate. And it was interesting, you know, I can't take credit for all that, but I take credit for at least igniting that flame a little bit. And then she, she took it the rest of the way, but that was kind of my first moment where I realized, man, I want to help people reach their full potential. You know what I mean? So feels good, doesn't it? Oh, dude, it feels real good. That's why I'm trying to pursue this avenue now being a success coach. And it's kind of weird because there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of grayness to that term, you know, it's not really black and white because everybody defines success differently, but you know, just with my education and my experience in sales and consulting and marketing and being a sales coach, um, and just my life experience, I think that I, what, what happened Trev is I actually found myself already doing this, the success coaching. I've been doing it for years and I never, I never knew that because putting a title to something like that is kind of strange. You know, you feel like, should I be putting a title to it? But right. then I look at my mentors and who I'm getting coaching from. And then I had this list of people underneath me, not in a bad way, but they were, they looked to me as their mentor. And I'm like, man, this is the, this is the arena that I want to step in. You know, whether it's helping somebody out physically or with a business or just getting out of anxiety and depression type situations, like that's the arena I want to be in. And that's really what motivated me to take the jump to the podcast thing is because 
it allows you to kind of speak to a larger audience, obviously, and you got to start somewhere, you know, and that's what I, that's what I've been trying to tell people, you know, like, and you can probably attest to this is sometimes we get this imposter syndrome where you feel like maybe you're out in front of your skis a little bit, like, man, should I be doing this? What's that? I mean, people know my past a little bit. Are they looking at me like, what's that guy doing giving advice? Right. You know, but like I tell everybody else, you gotta, you gotta get out there and be okay with not feeling comfortable. I mean, would you agree on that? hundred percent. I think people can use advice and they shouldn't just take all advice a hundred percent from any person. They need to think for themselves, but there's a million of people who need someone just above them to give them a little more knowledge. There's not one person that should be giving everyone knowledge. We should all be trying to strive to give each other knowledge that we can and then work our way up obviously and help the people below us. Not that they're below us, but the people that don't have the same knowledge as of as us in that particular arena. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's funny because CEOs of companies and people that are at the top of their game, they have personal coaches, you know, they, they hire people to help them balance out their life. And one thing I'm huge on, and I started getting into therapy because I was dealing with some anxiety and depression issues. And it was something that I just, I had pushed away. You know, I just went at, I went at it with my ego instead of my mind, right. you know? And so I took the mental approach and I started seeing a counselor and it's an investment, man. My insurance wasn't covering it. So I was paying out a cat out of pocket. So I'm paying a hundred dollars a session. And wow. I thought, you know what? If I don't put my money out there, I'm not going to hold myself accountable. Exactly. So I committed to so many sessions and honestly, man, it's just, it's opened up my life so much because it gave me that neutral party that I could communicate with because we all communicate with our spouses and significant other and your friends and your peers, but there's some stuff that you just kind of hold close to the best, you know? For sure. And if you can get in a one-on-one -on -one session with that, I mean, it allowed me to grow so much. And I was like, dude, this is, this is where it's at. This is what I believe everybody needs either a therapist, a success coach, a life coach, whatever you want to call it, a personal trainer, um, somebody that can instill different thoughts in you, help you see things differently, but they're basically holding the flashlight as you're trying to navigate in the dark. And eventually they hand the flashlight to you and then you can go do your own thing. hundred percent. Yeah. You need to have guidance. All even Olympic athletes have trainers. The CrossFit Games champion has a trainer. Like every trainer needs a trainer because we're humans. We need someone else to look inside from you know from looking from the outside and say, hey, you're not doing this, or helps keep you accountable, or whatever it is. They're giving you some insight and they're kind of directing you. That doesn't mm -hmm. mean we, we kind of grew up in a time where you know if another guy's telling you what to do, you're it's you're weak or something or. You, you have to be tough. Don't talk about your anxiety. Don't cry. As a man, you don't cry or whatever. Um, but all that's just kind of bullshit, in my opinion. I think if you're feeling a certain way, you need to find a way to work through it and not hide it. Work through that. Find somebody that can help you, whether it's you're trying to lose weight. Whatever it is, you need to find someone that can help you because obviously it's not happening. So it's not bad to put a little bit of money out there and invest in yourself. That's all I think of it is. All right, you're going to get a coach. You're going to buy 20 sessions. They're like, for me particularly, I'm helping them not just change their diet, exercise program, all that. I'm definitely doing that. But every time I see them, it's kind of like a pep talk. Like we're doing some life coaching. We're like, all right, why were you thinking about it this way? Let's try to think about food in a totally different way. Or let's try to think about exercise in a totally different way. Try to, you know, have a more positive mindset. Whatever it is they need help with, mm -hmm. it's worth them paying for the $80 an hour session or whatever they're paying, $100 an hour session. Um, so that they can kind of get better in whatever, whatever way they're looking to get better. Yeah. Sure. Amen to that, man. And it just, it catapults them into life because that confidence, I mean, anybody that's, you know, looking to work out or just feel better about themselves. I don't think there's, I, I was thinking about this the other day, actually having a conversation with one of my buddies and I couldn't think of anything more church was church was kind of on the same level for people but i thought what was the one thing somebody could do that could totally they would have the most impact on their life and my argument was physical fitness and the other person's argument was church and god and spirituality True. and 
So, I mean, you can imagine how that conversation kind of went. It was kind of like this tug of, tug of war, but we both had really valid points. What would you, what, what would you say about that? I mean, it's whatever the person needs at that time in their life, but I think they can, can go hand in hand, obviously. You need a purpose and you need to be fit and healthy to be able to get that purpose. So whether your purpose is just to be able to hang out with your kids and keep up with them and live longer, or you have a bodybuilding competition or a powerlifting competition, you need some kind of thing driving you. And if um, God, Heavenly Father, that's the per you know person that you're looking to for inspiration, I'm sure he wants you to be healthy too. So I, I wouldn't really think of it as two different directions. I would think they kind of go hand in hand. doesn't matter what religion you believe in or what particular you believe in. It all comes down to being a good person, staying positive, helping other people, you know, not sinning or, you know, whatever you consider a sin, but mm -hmm. you are trying to do better. You're trying to work towards something better. You're trying to be more positive. You're trying to help your body. You're healing your body. All those things kind of go hand in hand. Yeah, that was kind of the conclusion that we came to was that uh, it just, it, we kind of came to this thing, like, if you don't take care of yourself, then it's hard to take care of anybody else. You know, so you got to take care of yourself first, and then you can take care of your kids, you can take care of your spouse. And as a, and as a man, I think this is really important to understand is that, you know, we tend to carry a lot of uh, burden, you know, you, you, you start carrying a lot of weight on your shoulders. And I think if you have physical fitness in your life, it helps you, it calluses your mind and helps you get through those tough situations. You know, when finances are not going well, or you, you know, you got to take care of your spouse and your kids and, and then they take care of you as well. You know, it's, it's reciprocal. So anyway, man. Yeah. So let's, uh, I want to jump over to, well, let's kind of stay on the same topic in your experience. Why do people fail to stay with training or a diet? Like what's, what, what's the one thing that hinders people you think? I think what, what they're failing at is they're considering it a diet. They're not considering it a lifestyle, um, even training because it's not, okay, I'm going to eat keto. For example, I'm going to eat a lot of fats. and I'm going to eat this certain thing for three months. I'm going to lose a bunch of weight and then I can go back to whatever. It's going to be a lifestyle. So if, if keto works for you, that's fine. I don't, I don't really partic particularly pick one kind of diet Obviously, there's pluses and minuses to all diets. Um, it really comes down to where you're at, what your goals are. So if you're trying to gain weight, then you're going to be eating in a surplus above your calorie goal, and you should have macronutrient goal within that, so you're getting the right proteins and stuff. Um, or if you're trying to lose weight, you're going to be in, a, in kind of a, a negative surplus of food, so you're going to be in negative energy balance, so you're going to be losing body fat hopefully not losing muscle because we're weight training. Um, if you're trying to stay the same, then you're going to be at a maintenance level. So I think what they're thinking is I need to eat Mediterranean or I need to eat keto. I'm going to lose all this weight, but you can still eat those ways and, and gain weight. You can still eat those ways and not be successful. You can eat those ways and lose a bunch of weight, but stop eating that, start adding carbs back. And because you can't control your calorie input, you just gain it all back. So it needs to be a lifestyle change. It has to be, I'm not going to work out for three months or four months and I, I'm going to be fit and then it's over. Like to maintain your health and fitness, you got to keep doing what you're doing. You need to keep slowly progressing and it doesn't have to be, you know, just kill it hard for three months and then all of a sudden, you know, you lose all this weight and things are going great and then it's over. It's like little steps, little steps, little steps, little steps for the rest of your life. Little steps, little steps, little steps. It's that compound effect, you know. Oh yeah. A bit to the bank, a little bit to the bank each day, you know, a little more positivity, a little cleaner eating, trying to get a little bit better with our tracking, trying to get in the gym a little more often, finding the balance between that and family and all the other things. There's always something to work towards. I think. Yeah. I like that. Um, what do you, what do you believe it takes to be, what does it take to be successful? And I know successful is a somewhat of a subjective question, but um I mean, just, I think you've touched on it a lot already, but I mean, if you were to, if somebody came to you and said, Hey, you know, I'm 18, 19 years old, like what advice would you give them? My advice to them would be to try some different things out and get invested in whatever you're doing and put your everything into it. Don't just think, all right, I need to be a doctor. So I'm just going to kill it and be a doctor and then end up hating being a doctor. Try a few different things out. 
life is kind of, it's beautiful. You can do all kinds of different things. You can go from being the poorest person anyone knows to being the richest. Like you can, you can be 350 pounds and, and then do bodybuilding shows and lose all a bunch of body fat. So you can try different things out, find out what makes you happy, find out what drives you. So for me, it's, it's exercising and it's really seeing people change, like seeing people's faces when they've lost the weight and they've learned all these things and, and just helping them do better, helping them in any way I can. Um, but really, it didn't come down to making the most money or any of that. It came down to being happy. So, you know, if you can be happy and, and you have a job that makes 20 bucks an hour and that's enough for you and, and that's your family gets along fine with that and you're totally happy, why work a job that you hate that pays 30 bucks an hour just to make 10 bucks an hour more? And then you're miserable, and your family falls apart. Like, to me, it's like, what matters most to you? So as a 19 year old, it's gonna be different than a 30 year old, obviously. So mm -hmm. I think you spend that time kind of slowly preparing to what you think you wanna be, but don't put all your eggs in that basket. You just kind of keep it open and keep working hard at whatever you're doing, but that's gonna to lead to a lot more opportunities. And one thing I do have to say is, always don't burn bridges man like just be open to being friends with everybody like wherever you go you don't know who you're going to talk to open the door for them be kind to them give them an extra minute give them a free session give them something for free like give it out there because it's going to come back like and don't expect it to come back just do it and you'll feel good about yourself even if it doesn't come back to you because you knew you were doing what's right and then i think you'll be a lot happier in the long run than just you know going out there I'm just trying to be the most successful to me. The most successful is doing very well and having a big gym and all that, but it's mostly like leaving something behind where people thought I was respectful and I did a good job and I showed them my heart. I think. Yeah. I read this quote the other, other morning. I, so in the mornings I'll try to, I'll jump on my phone and I'll go through Pinterest or I just, I kind of have this little thing in my phone where I'll just 10, 15 minutes, just give me some positive vibes and just, you know, it kind of primes the engine for me. And I read this quote the other day. It said something about take care of yourself because they'll post your, they'll post your job before they'll post your obituary. Yeah. So, so, and it kind of looked at me, I was like, mm, man, it makes me think like if I, if I passed away, dude, I bet you they would be getting their recruiters looking for a new insurance agent. Like right now, you know, they would be like, they'd post that before my obituary. So like take care of your, look out for yourself in these situations. You know, a lot of us work for big corporations or even if you don't, but I think to your point, if, if you look out for other people, other people are going to have that same respect, hopefully. I mean, that's what we want to see more of. Right. And I don't know, man, I just, I, again, I tie it all back to physical fitness and diet and I've got away from it. And when I, when I got away from it um, in my mid twenties, man, I felt like crap. My, I felt like my anxiety was worse. I felt like I, my depression was worse. Um, I was, I was getting frustrated, you know, like, and I think it was cause my, probably my self-confidence was lower. And so you tend to kind of act out a little bit with a little bit of aggression. Mm -hmm. And I've just, I've been on both sides of that fence. And so when I see somebody act in a certain way, I just want to go tell them like, Hey man, have you, have you ever thought about, you know, getting into a f physical fitness program of any kind, you know, but obviously that conversation is pretty hard, but yeah. uh, you know, I think it's having, having conversations like this on a podcast where people can listen to it and they may not agree with it, but in the back of their mind, they're kind of thinking, oh, I need to, I need to kind of go do something, you know? I mean, it's done world, everything for me when it comes to anxiety. Like I grew up, started to have panic attacks in high school. I think it was just from losing my father and a bunch of other people died in my life. And just having, you know, crackheads coming in and out of my house at random times and stepping on needles or finding meth bags or whatever. And like nothing felt solid. So I just had this sense of like anxiety, like something was going to go wrong and the cops were going to come take my mom away or whatever. Something bad was going to happen at all times. And But when you start eating healthy and getting all your things in line. You don't have anything to be worried about. Like what, there's no more anxiety. There's nothing to worry about because you've been working out. You've been doing what you're supposed to. You're eating healthy. So you're not putting those things in your body that make you feel more anxious. You're starting to cut out all the things that, especially like alcohol, even you know, excessive caffeine, stuff like that. Even sugar a lot can, can make your heart rate start going. But 
you start noticing things. The fitter you are, you're like, oh, that really affects me. Like you stop drinking caffeine for a month and then do it again, it'll, it'll light you up. But if you're used to it, you can have, you know, four or five cups a day. So I think that we don't really realize how much it affects our mental health to, to be active. And one of the goals we do a lot, just so people get rolling is step counts. Like you get them doing 10,000 steps a day and that's a huge change. That's a huge start for them is just getting active. They just go for walks. And you have these people change what they're eating and a little more steps and their body starts changing crazy, which because they've just been sitting around, they're not paying attention to how many steps they're getting a day. And then their depression and anxiety all get better because they're moving. They're using mm. your, you're using your body. You're supposed to be moving your body. We're not supposed to be sitting at a desk all day. We weren't built to sit all day. That's why there's all these people with neck problems and back problems and they're all hunched forward. They need to be doing the reverse of that to pull them back up and, and get their body moving again. So the diet and exercise definitely comes into play greatly in that, that aspect. But uh, again, going back to being a 19 year old, what I would tell them is I do agree with you saying you need to watch out for yourself and give back at the same time. Cause I've worked for a lot of corporate companies and what they do is they're going to use you, you know, you're a body to them. They're going to make you money most of the time. So have that in your mind, know that that's basically what's going to happen, but you're always striving to be some, something bigger, something else and have, a goal. So like working at, with those juvenile corrections kids, I had to have hard boundaries. And I said, okay, you're not going to give me a raise. You know, I'll give it six more months. If they don't give me another raise, I'm going to find a better job. And in the meantime, I'm going to find something else. So we're working for a big personal training company. They're taking usually 70%, 60, 70% of what you're making. And that's crazy. So I'm like, all right, I'll do this. I'll build up some clients. You know, I'll learn what I can. And then I'm going to step forward. So you know that they're going to be there for you. You don't just sit there and allow it to keep happening and keep happening for 20, 30 years. You use it, then you move on, and then you start building towards a business for yourself. Because I have to say, as a business owner, everyone's kind of scared to start their own business. Like, it's not that big a deal. Just do it. Like, just try it. There's a lot of us who didn't know what we were doing, and then we just started doing it. And the success will come. Obviously, you're going to have some failures along the way, but going back to, you know, exercising. I've had a lot of failures in the gym. I've had a lot of injuries and I've rehabbed myself back. And it just, I think it makes me a lot stronger mentally. Like if something was to happen, like if this business failed now, I'd probably just start another one. There, there's no way I'm going to stop. So it's just going to get bigger and bigger no matter what. And that kind of helps you in your mindset of just getting stronger mentally working out. Yeah. And I think uh, to your point that people, uh... I mean, I have three businesses that I own right now and run and operate. My wife, my wife's business is probably the bigger of those three. You know, we have over 200, like 200 customers. You know, she runs a dance studio. And so you got 200, you got 200 students, plus you got the parents that you're taking care of, right? Their needs and their expectations. And um, I think, I think people, <laughs> it's weird. It's almost like, uh, the word business or owning a business, people blow it up to something that it's not. It's overhyped, man. I'm telling you right now, when you say, hey, I'm a business owner, or it scares people to go start a business. And it's so weird to me because it scared me at first. But I mean, think about this. Take out the legalities of it, your LLCs, your insurance that you need, your payroll taxes, things like that. Take the legality side of it out of it. If when I was 19 is when I did that person, let's see, I was 20 when I did that personal training thing. All business is, is somebody exchanging money for value. That's it. It's nothing more. So a lot of us do that daily and we don't even know it. Mm. You know, if you work for a company for 10, 15 years, I would say that you have a pretty you have a pretty good education or you have the gist of what it would take to go run a business. Not only that is that you see as a consumer, what just look at where you go as a consumer. What are the things that you want? What are the things that you think could be better? Well, that's your business. That's what you do when you're in control. Mm -hmm. And when you start the business, now you can start doing those things and implementing them. But I think people just have this huge fear about, Oh, I own a business. I'm, I'm nervous. What do I do? Yeah, and it's, yeah. not, it's not. It shouldn't be that way. I think you need to have a business degree. I have to go to college and have a business degree to run this business. 
I mean, if I knew what I wanted to do when I was younger, I probably wouldn't even needed to go to college because a lot of the training aspect, yes, it helped, but it mostly helped me decide that I was going to give up. That's what college did for me. It didn't necessarily teach me everything about training. It didn't teach me. It just taught me because I had to pay. I had to be there. Mm-hmm. It taught me, I need to show up. I'm going to work hard and I'm not going to quit no matter what. That's all it taught me. So if I would have had that before I started, I would just open my own business and I wouldn't have any you know, student loans or any of that. So don't be afraid to go out and you know, start a business, even if it's something small, you know, just start something and see how it goes. Do it as your side hustle until you can do it as your main hustle. But yeah, you don't have to, you don't have to be an expert. You know, you can sit back and think about marketing. What is that person doing that I like? What are they doing that I don't like? What would I do differently? And uh, I think you'd be very successful if you just try. I think people are just scared of failing. And if you fail, do it again, do a different one, fail five times, fail 30 times. You might lose $30,000, but if you do the same thing for 20 years, say you had a successful business and made millions of dollars, like you're missing out on money anyways, if you're just doing the same thing always. So I think you might as well give it a shot. Yeah. And it goes back to that happiness thing that you were talking about, you know, is you, you could be working in a box for somebody in a corporation making good money, but at the end of the day, you're coming home and you're unhappy. So I, I tell my clients all the time, like if money was happiness, what would you be doing for work? Exactly. Like, what would you be doing? You know, if money didn't exist and it was just all dollars and cents was actually equated to happiness, would you still be doing that job? And a lot of times they'll be like, no, I'd be doing this. Okay, well, let's get you on the path to be doing that. That's where you need to be. That's where you're going to thrive, you know? I think so, that's where this comes into play. That's how we become successful. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, dude, so I play this little game. Um, it's called Someday Smoke. <laughs> and so it's just like, it's like random questions, random rapid fire questions. But okay, okay. <laughs> uh, so I might catch you off guard, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'll start with kind of like a, more of an intellectual question. So if you could see a measuring scale above people's heads, what would you want the scale to measure? Oh, like people walking around? Yeah, people walking around and there's a scale above their head and it told you how much they had of something. What would you want that something to be? Mm. <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very suspicious of people. So I think just like, I don't know how you would put it in words, but like. Sketchy. How, a monitor. Genuine, how genuine their heart is. Like how true of a person, how good of a person they are. You know what I mean? Are they a piece of shit that's going to stab you in the back? Or are they somebody that will stick by you forever to whatever you do? Like, so like um, a loyal, almost like a loyalty scale. Yeah, probably a mix of loyalty. And it could even be a complete stranger to them. Or are they going to hold that door open for that old lady and help her across the street? Or they're just going to keep going about their day, looking at their cell phone and let the door slam in our face, you know? That kind yeah. of thing. Are they a good person or are they not? And that, that can be a lot of different things. <laughs> I, th- I would like that. That would be cool. Wouldn't that be a trip, dude? Yeah. I think a lot more people would be trying a lot harder to be good people if, if you could see it from the if outside. you could see what was in the, yeah exactly if you're inside who you were basically your character like the things that you're doing when no one else is around if that was how you were judged in so in in society versus based on your looks and your money and stuff dude that would be a trip man i think we'd have a lot of people you'd be looking at like hmm yeah i think a lot of the these people i think a lot of the not all, but a lot of the prettiest people might be the ones that look the ugliest or have the worst rating on there. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, amen, dude. I, th- I think so. All right, next question. Um, man, this one's kind of deep too. Uh, so who is your hero? You might have more than one hero, but like what comes, who comes to mind? Um, my hero, probably my mom. My mm. dad passed. My, my dad was very physically abusive to my mom. Um, she had a lot of hard times growing up, but she always found a way to, to help us get like Christmas or even though she was gone a lot and she kind of got caught up with drugs when I was younger, she, she fixed all that. She went back to college, graduated. And ever since then, she just cleaned everything up completely, like 100%. She quit smoking, didn't do anything else from then on. Like she was just a rock solid after that. So I'd have to say my mom for sure. She showed a lot of heart between the mental and physical abuse. My dad was, my dad was nuts. My, he like one time he just destroyed our whole house just on a rampage, break, broke everything in our entire house. Um, and she just 
she just found a way to make us feel safe, even though we weren't safe and got us out of those positions. And then she's always supported me no matter what, like she always believed that I would be the best. She's always been my biggest cheerleader. And she's always like shown everyone, even people I'm like, why are you helping that person? Like she's letting some, some person live in her house for free. And you know, they, they steal her camper or never pay or end up stealing something from her. And she just keeps doing it because she has just the biggest heart ever. I've never met somebody that's so giving and kind no matter what. So I, I definitely said my mom. That's cool, man. That's way cool. Um, what's a what's a pet peeve of yours? A pet peeve? Um, what just bothers you, man? Like somebody cutting you off in traffic, or it well, sounds like sounds like people not holding a door is definitely a pet peeve. <laughs> I don't like it when I hold the door and someone doesn't say thank you. That bothers me a little bit, but not my biggest pet peeve. My biggest pet peeve would probably be these Instagram influencers. Um, out there giving advice about health and nutrition and they don't have any right to be. They have no idea what they're saying. They're not using scientific journals or studies. They're just like using that and they're marketing it and they have 350, 350 million followers or whatever and they're selling plans for $10 a piece that are just some made up bullshit that's not even, like you could literally just pull that anywhere but because they have those followers and they look really good and they're putting, you know, they have the gym shark outfits on and the tan people believe they they are right and they just buy that stuff from them and it's junk all day long they just make the same plan for every person and every plan should be written individually like one person has weak glutes one person has you know weak scap they don't have any scapular mobility whatever it is like they have different injuries and and different things that they need for their plans to be written specifically and nutrition goals whether their size you know all those things come into play and they're just giving them like blank here you go generic Just, information oh yeah and it's bad information it's like you know the uh the, sl the sk slim skinny waist trainers mm -hmm. they have the waist trainers which it's actually causing problems for their body and they're just because they're wearing them everyone thinks they need to buy them or the the detox teas or the herbalife like those body fat loss cellulite wraps so you wrap this thing around your body and it makes you lose body fat somehow but that's not how body fat is ever lost and it could never be lost that way. It's eating less calories and moving more, obviously being <laughs> in a calorie deficit. Um, but yeah, that kind of stuff I think is what gets me the most heated. Cause it's just, it's sad because these people are looking for help and they're just kind of like preying on them because they know they, they need help and they know that they're going to pay for it, but that's never going to help that person. It's just going to, they're going to get frustrated and they're going to give up before they find the real coach that could help them get to where they need to be. I think, that's probably <laughs> <laughs> dude i'm going to second that as my pet peeve so um obviously as a like as a su success coach or even a podcaster right like i have my goal is to be an influencer i guess you could say on social media that's how kind of the world is working now from a marketing standpoint right. one thing that i've realized in the two and a half months of doing this is that there's so much bs out there and you're exactly right. These people have a ton of followers and people following them are just pawns to their scheme, yeah. man. It is insane to me. Like I'll see these people that put all these positivity quotes and like the plagiarism is just insane. Like yeah. when you, when there's a quote, you put who that was by, if it's a famous quote, you should right? Put like yeah. quit stealing people's stuff. Right. <laughs> it drives me freaking nuts, dude. And so like, I've read probably, I don't know, 40, 50 personal development books in my, in the last 10, 15 years, which isn't a lot to compare to some people, but it's funny because they'll take a quote and they'll put it out there and it'll have like 20,000 likes and they're not referencing oh, yeah. who it was. And I was like, dude, I read that book too. You know, like that stuff drives me freaking crazy out there. That's people just need to tag. Like if they're going to do that, just tag the person that came up with it. It's not that big a deal. Like say who came up with it. You didn't come up with it. Big deal, man. It doesn't make you any smarter to like post that kind of stuff. And then, and no one wants to hear it. Like if you call them out on that, people are going to attack you. If you were like, Hey, this is wrong. This guy actually wrote it and tag him. You're going to get attacked for actually like calling them out on it, which is annoying as well. Well, I think the sooner you live, the sooner you realize we live in a borrowed society I mean, oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's one huge echo chamber. Think about if you go to school. Well, 
are you learning? Are you learning? Are you just making that knowledge up? Who's teaching you that knowledge? Like it all trickles down. And so if you're a very smart doctor, yes, sometimes you're on the cutting edge and you're kind of an innovator and you come up with a certain process. Yes. But 95% of that education and everything inside your head was taught previously. And you yes. consume that knowledge. It, it's borrowed information and you just have a different way of putting it out there, you know, right. or executing. Like if it's an exercise, maybe somebody can do like a lateral shoulder raise better. Maybe the one guy's just a little bent over forward and he's not always straight and he's not using his shoulders. He's using his back. Like different people, different situations. You know, I, I always tell people like choose your flavors in life. I mean, you, we have all these flavors that we like, like I love Mexican food, dude. Like you cannot, like, that's my, that's my jam. Well, that's my flavor, right? Other people like maybe sushi or Italian or whatever, like choose your flavors in life. Don't feel like you have to just, oh, I got to stick to this because everybody thinks that that's the way to do it. No, it's not, you know, to, to your point about training and stuff, man. I think that's why you're, I can't think of anybody I can't think of anybody that's more well-equipped to be a personal trainer and kind of a slash life coach than you, man. I really can't. I think it's uh, right in that passion space where you should be. I feel like this is what you were meant to do with your life. Right. I agree. And I always keep my mind open a hundred percent to like, there's not one way to do side laterals, for example, like say they have, you know, a weaker back and they need to hit the rear delt a little more or, they have an impingement in their shoulder and they can't internally rotate from the shoulder. As a lot of people talk about when they're doing side lateral, they need to do thumbs up like open cans. There's every single person is different. So you need to get them in front of you to see which way they need to hit it. Where are they weak? Where are they strong? That's why it's not a one size one fits all. You need that coach to be like, Oh, this is you. This is how we hit it. And then they're like, Whoa, light bulb. Now I know how to do things for my specific body type. And, it, and I think that's really nice to be able to be always open to learning always like I'm never going to feel like I'm the best coach ever it doesn't matter if I somehow am the best coach and I learn everything I learned it all from someone else obviously lots and lots and lots of people put it all together to make it happen but there's always going to be something new there's always going to be a different angle to hit something and there's always going to be a different body type in front of me where I need to learn to how to make them move and stuff so that's it keeps it interesting I like it because it's always a challenge how are we going to make this person the best that they can be so it's pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely, man. Well, hey, we'll, we'll get out of here. I know you got your busy guy and uh, it's Friday evening. So I'm sure you want to get to the family. Yeah. How can people, how can people get a hold of you that are listening to the podcast? Um, you know, like a website or like, let's say somebody wants to get some training and some advice from you. Uh, how sure. can they go about doing that? I'd say the easiest way to get a hold of me is train with Trev on Instagram. Um, or you can email me at trainwithtrev1 at gmail.com. Um, but Instagram is always an easy one. You know, you can just DM me there. Don't be scared. I think a lot of people are scared to message. I, I see a lot of messages that my clients send me that, Oh, will you contact him for me? And so my client contacts me and then I contact them. I'm like the easiest guy ever to talk to. So I've been through it all. I've seen it all. I'm not worried. You know, don't hide from me. Just message me, hit me up. I'll get back to you right away. I grew up in an age where you don't ignore texts. Like you get back to somebody right away. I'm not the one to leave you on red because I'm on it right then. Someone sends me a message. They're like, Hey, what do I do? And they're my client. I'm not making them wait a whole week till I respond. I'm going to get back to them as quick as I can. Obviously if I'm with a client, I'm not going to interrupt that session, but they're not going to be waiting that long. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's yeah, awesome. On Instagram and uh, hit me up on the email if you need to, but yeah, I think you get, I think we, there'll be a lot of people interested, man. And it's just, I think if everybody, if personal training was free, I think everybody would, you'd have a line out the door and oh, people, yeah. <laughs> you know, people need to understand that. Like right now we're, we're into our new year's resolutions. We're into our goals. We want to lose 10, 15 pounds. You know, we just, maybe we want to quit smoking or get healthier. Like these are millions of people across the world are in this mindset right now. And so, I mean, I would say to people, if you really want to grow, if you really want to change and accomplish something, put money out there. Why? Because we hold money very sacred. You know, a lot of us don't, if we don't have a lot of money or it's just like, ah, I, I just, I need that extra $40 because, you know, it needs to go here or here or here. 
I'm telling you right now, it will, like Trevor said, it, there's a compound effect that will happen. If you spend 40 and then that increases your ability to work and increases your mental capabilities, you can, I'll give you a perfect example. This is, I hate to share this right now because this is kind of a self study that I'm doing right now. So I've been tracking all my workouts. Okay, I write down everything that I'm working, everything I've done physically. I've been doing it um, nine, nine, nine and a half months. Or excuse me, not nine and a half months. I'm nine and a half weeks into it. Basically what I'm doing, Trev, is I'm looking at it. I'm seeing if I can find a direct correlation between my income and my physical journal. Dude, and I'm telling you right now, man, it is, it is peaking. I don't have, I, I kind of did a rough estimate the other day. I was just kind of like, Oh, what's this trending? And I started looking at my income and I'm, I'm going 12 weeks with it. I'm going to do 12 weeks of this is me getting back into exercising and eating cleanly. And I'm going to see if that has a direct correlation with my income. That's awesome. Because then I could say, you know, I think about coaching programs that I've done in further education, even in school, you know, it's like, Hey, you pay 40 grand to go out there and make a hundred grand. That's the same thing with personal training, I would say, or with any type of personal development is if you put the money out there and it gives you 10 times the return, that's, that's an investment you want to do all day. The education you're going to get should be lifelong. If you listen and you pay attention and you get all this, you can use it forever. It's not like you have to pay for a coach for years. I mean, some people do because they have huge competition goals, but once you get lined out and you understand how to track your macros, how to set everything, how to find a training program that's changing, whether it's like reps or sets or periodization or change weekly. So we're building each week. We're doing either more reps or sets. We're doing periodization to where our body's getting stronger, we're getting stronger. And then we deload and start a new program. So we're always getting a little bit better, but learning all the little principles of that and seeing it, once you've done that, you've learned all the stuff that I've put into it over the last 12 years how much did you pay? You paid, you know, a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, forty bucks or whatever. But then you just got all that knowledge that I just spent, you know, twelve years and hundreds of thousands of dollars and man, thousands and thousands and thousands of hours in the gym that you're not gonna learn just going and doing on your own. Like you that's worth investing in. And I wish I probably would have done it sooner because I definitely would have grown a lot faster and wouldn't be thirty seven years old before I got to where I'm at. I should have got a business coach and a life coach. You know, even at like 25, 26 years old, I would be, I'd be running a big gym by now, you know? Mm -hmm. So I definitely invest in yourself, whether it's a life coach or a, a fitness coach or whatever it is you need and make it happen. It's worth the money. Trev, if you need a success coach or a business coach, dude, I, I know a guy. Uh -huh. Same to you, brother. I'll, I'll, how about this? I'll trade you, I'll trade you some success coaching for some personal training, some virtual training, since I'm four hours away from you. That worked out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> More value for me there, I think. Uh, no, you know what I was thinking, Trev? Um, and I'm going to put you on the spot right here. And I told you before the podcast, I wouldn't put you on the spot. But would you agree to, let's say somebody, there, people are listening to this podcast and they want to get involved in training. They just want to do maybe one, two, three sessions if they mention the podcast saying, Hey, I heard the podcast. I want to get a session with you. Would you throw out some sort of uh, like promo discount of some kind oh, off maybe a first session or something? Oh yeah. I'll give them a free session. Um, if they're doing online training, I'll give them their first month half off, but okay. they, they got to do more than a month with me. Cause one month is usually not enough time. Right? You yeah. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. That, that's the it's a month to like, get going. Okay. This is how we track. This is all right. I got to get to the gym. I'm not sore every day. Now I can handle it. It takes more than a month to get going. You get on a roll around 21 days. You start that habit, right? 21 plus days, you start a habit. So right at the end of that month, it's time it's go time. And that's when things start really happening. So yeah, I would definitely be open to that. Okay. Awesome. Okay, guys, you heard it. So if you mentioned the podcast, reach out to Trevor on Instagram, say, Hey, heard you on the podcast. He'll hook you up with a free session one free session. And if you're more of a virtual training type client, then he'll give you half off your first month. Did I say that right, Trev? That's correct. Right on, brother. Okay, man. Double bicep. Goodbye. Ah! Ah! Gotta do it again, man. I liked it. It was fun.
Hell yeah, brother. Thanks for taking the time, man. I really appreciate it. You and your family stay safe out there, man. You too, brother. Okay, man. Take it easy. We'll talk to you again.